what can you learn from one dead fly? Um, turns out quite a lot. That guy's a neuroscientist with the Medical Research Council Laboratory of Molecular Biology. And that unalive fly he's referring to helped spawn this. A complex 3D model of how an adult fruit fly's brain works. It's actually the first ever wiring diagram of a fruit fly's complete brain, revealing around 140,000 neurons and more than 50 million connections that control the fly. We're talking about the fly's sensory perceptions, memory, even mating rituals. Hubba hubba. The closer you look, you know, the more surprised, we you know, we as scientists are. Our scientist here is a co-author of a new study just published in the journal Nature. And he's just one of the hundreds of experts who worked on this massive decade-long effort to map the full brain of a fruit fly. Now this brain is only about the size of a poppy seed. So calling one of these guys pea brain would actually be quite the compliment. And to make this fly brain wiring diagram, scientists first took the brain out of the dead fly, then stained it with heavy metals so an electron microscope could see it, and proceeded to slice it into 7,000 separate 40 nanometer sections, using what our neuroscientists described as a microscopic salami slicer, which were all then imaged into 100 terabytes worth of data, the type of storage need that would make Dropbox salivate. With this full 3D model complete, our scientists noted to the Associated Press that there's a lot going on in the mind of one of these damn pests. So for example, we know that they can walk and fly, and those are actually pretty complicated things. Artificial intelligence has a very difficult time interfacing with the real world, and yet they do it effortlessly. They also can learn and remember uh, things, quite complicated forms of learning. They can navigate, so they have a sense of which direction they're going, um, and they can even keep track if you turn the lights off of you know their movements as they walk along towards some target. They can also sing um, and recognize their species-specific song, the males sing to the females during courtship. So there's lots of quite sophisticated behaviors and actually many more that probably we don't yet know about. It might have sounded like our fly guy was trashing AI on the sly, but that's not quite the case. For one thing, without the help of artificial intelligence here, scientists claim that mapping this damn fruit fly brain would have taken around 4,000 human years. Just less than half the time that clock Bezos is building into a mountain somewhere is supposed to last. And in terms of sensory interactions with the environment and processing efficiency, the brain of this tiny little fruit fly significantly outclasses the latest supercomputers. So who's the one with the real Apple intelligence? AI uh, has a lot of trouble in interacting with the real world, whether it is, you know, in taking in, you know, complex sensory interactions, but especially actually in producing complex motor outputs. And so I think that's, that's one thing where we have a lot to learn from real brains. Also, their, their efficiency is remarkable, right? Um, if you think about the amount of power, you know, microwatts that it takes to power a fly brain, you know, versus a similar computational device, you know, made in silicon, there are many orders of magnitudes of difference. So I think that's another thing where people will be trying to, uh, trying to learn lessons. Now, just because these scientists made a groundbreaking map of the brain of a fruit fly does not mean they're on the cusp of mapping yours like that. Sure, one takeaway from all this is that it's going to open the door for scientists to better study the brains of other creatures. But the human brain is far more complicated than that of a fruit fly, no offense. So yeah, you can keep your hat on for the time being. There's a million fold uh, difference in neurons uh, between the fly uh, brain and the human brain. And in fact, the volume of the brains, which is quite important for imaging and image processing to generate uh, these brain maps, is even a little bit bigger. So it's going to be a while. Right now in the field, they're focusing a lot on uh, some slightly uh, you know, some brains sort of in between. Uh, so the zebrafish is a common vertebrate model system and the mouse is definitely in people's minds. That's music to Disney's ears, I'm sure. But one last question. Why exactly do they choose to study the brain of a dead fly? So there's several reasons for that. One of them is the fact that you can recognize the same neuron in one fly brain and find it in another. So we can study this dead brain and relate that to neurons that we can then go and find in the flies we have in the lab. And in those flies, we can study the activity of uh, the neurons, record the electrical signals or change them. And one of the important things actually in the work that's just been published is we showed that these connectomes, these brain maps, are actually you know, stereotyped across individuals. So they're not sort of snowflakes. They're not unique just to that one fly. Well, we here at your Daily News Refresh believe that you're a unique snowflake, just like our thousands of other subscribers. So why not join them by liking this video and subscribing for new weird, funny, and interesting news stories each and every day. Buzz, buzz.